Welcome to Subramani. Uh, once in a while, you should look at some of the things which a regulator has done uh, and find out whether it has had any useful impact. So, today we will take uh, three laws uh, made by SEBI and I have no clue what has been the impact of this on the how it has helped the uh, mutual fund advisor or the mutual fund uh, user or anybody, the industry in general. So, let me pick up the first one. There was a, there used to be a upfront commission for selling mutual funds which was abolished long ago. But along with that, there was one amazingly stupid rule, uh, sorry to say, use, use this word, but uh, which said that if an advisor or uh, I mean the third thing I am going to talk about the word advisor, uh, but if a person invested in his own mutual fund, which means uh, used his own uh, registration number to uh, invest in mutual funds, he will not get any commission. Uh, this was supposedly to discourage uh, the, uh, the uh, upfront commission being passed back. Right. Uh, first of all, I thought always thought that passing back or not passing back is a uh, investors and the uh, advisors uh, relationship. Right. There is nothing which you can say you should pass back, not pass back, or things like that. But anyway, that apart, that we can have a longish discussion. But that rule which says that if a person has an ARN and has an no investment in his own name, he or she cannot get commission on that. That rule has not changed. It suits the mutual fund industry. But then, of course, these are all the three rules that I'm going to talk to, to you today about are what I would call Mickey Mouse rules. These rules exist and these rules can easily be circumvented and that is what happens. But today there is an option. So, an advisor can go and invest uh, in uh, a direct option and therefore there is no question of any commission otherwise what they used to do is to uh, use a friend's uh, ARN number or use the wife's ARN number or daughter's ARN number every house would have three four ARNs uh, that way they could beat GST they could beat income tax and they could beat this Mickey Mouse rules this is a small rule let us ignore it there is another rule which is uh, which has been hurting actually the uh, investors because it says if you are a mutual fund not more than 5% of your business you can do with one uh, broker so if i am uh, let's say access mutual fund i cannot deal with just so, if I am Axis Mutual Fund, I cannot deal only with Axis Securities. If I am HDFC Mutual Fund, I cannot deal only with HDFC Securities. HDFC Securities can be one of the persons whose services I use. Right? So, I need 20 others because of the 5% rule. Now, you don't want to fall foul of the law. So, you say not 20 but 30 so that you know in case there is an emergency and I have to sell and I can't get through to another broker I can use. So, you will never go to 5% with any broker you will stay at 4%. So, if you stay at 4% that straight away makes it 25 brokers. Why would you have such an absolute Mickey Mouse rule? Because the broker's lobby went and said, if you uh, the, there will be too much concentration and we small brokers will die. So, therefore, you have to have this Mickey Mouse rule and therefore, we have this Mickey Mouse rule. Uh, well, it is there. You can't uh, say it should not be there. Well, it is. It, so, it is there. It is still there and that is what has caused most of the problems in Axis Mutual Fund. Now, suppose I am Axis Mutual Fund and I deal with only HDFC Securities, ICSA Securities, Axis Securities and some XYZ Securities, the fourth security how, uh, broker. Uh, uh, right. So, it is very easy for me to monitor. I also know that my broker goes through the same rigmarole which I go through. He also has uh, compliance. They also have to have the uh, their own due diligence, everything happening. They will not be able to pass back and most importantly, the person who is soliciting my business is not the beneficiary by allowing me to do some insider trading and things like that. So, it is, imp it is easier for me to monitor a uh, well run obviously all of them are registered with SEBI a well run brokerage house so therefore my investors who are mutual fund uh, unit holders are better off when I when I don't have this Mickey Mouse rule 
we still have it we have suffered uh, i mean why why did i say access mutual fund because access mutual fund suffered because of the connivance of their trader with the broker right not the management but the trader and the broker connived and they did insider trading and then the rest is history so uh, another mickey mouse rule uh, the third mickey mouse rule came sometime in 2020 that is one about which i'm going to talk to you a little longer sometime in 2019 or 2020 my memory is not very clear uh, sebi came out with a rule saying that unless you are registered with sebi as an investment advisor you cannot call yourself an advisor so if you are a uh, person who has been um, last 20 years let's say you started in 1998 so 22 years you have been uh, helping people invest in mutual funds at a time when people did not know what is a mutual fund when people thought uh, SIP meant sipping, and uh, people didn't know any of those things. They didn't know what is a debt fund, equity fund, nothing. You went around door to door trying to convince people that they should invest. Many of your investors have benefited a lot, uh, or maybe all your investors have benefited a lot. All of them swear by you, and you have built your standing. You're not a very highly qualified person. Maybe you're a BCom, uh, or maybe you are qualified. It doesn't really matter. But you are a specialist. uh specializing in uh, investment advice you also give advice on mutual funds uh i mean fixed bank fixed deposits ppf uh, etc but largely your income depends on the um, commission or which is which should be actually called fees uh which you get from the uh, fund houses uh, for the work that you do is that amount high low should it be paid should it not be paid is a completely different debate so we are not talking about that now suddenly sebi says no no you are not registered as an advisor so you can't call yourself an advisor what else can you call yourself uh, i don't know uh, whether you can call yourself a consultant whether you can call yourself a specialist uh what happens if you call yourself a uh, uh, i'm a financial planning specialist i help you with your income tax i help you with how to pay your children school fees i help you with your uh, uh, retirement planning etc but uh, no i'm not a mutual fund advisor because uh, sebi my regulator says i cannot call myself an advisor uh, is that fair i don't know but let's look at it as a mickey mouse rule will sebi ever be able to know who is calling himself an advisor or a distributor answer is no it's only the written communication that is going to matter uh, will any of these things come up in an audit uh, well maybe yes maybe no and does it really matter does it really matter whether your person is called an advisor or a consultant or a distributor uh, i really don't know because the word distributor is not understood uh, at all uh, who i mean a grocer is a distributor of uh, food grains and bread and uh, things like that is he a distributor yes uh, does he run a shop yes does he give you advice on which bread to buy and say no no don't buy that that is stale uh, i'll get you new bread uh, this is a new brand which has come so why do you want to try bone vita uh, here is chocolate hotlicks right any of those things is that advice i don't know uh is it uh, is it is he like a medical uh, shop guy who is saying no no i cannot give you this unless you have a prescription go to a doctor no a grocer is not a, a grocer is not a, a medical shop right grocer grocer does not need you to be even qualified as a compounder or a, a pharma guy a pharma person has to be qualified so every shop has to have one person named as the uh b farm there who is supposed to look at your prescription and say can give can't give things like that so what happens if i call myself a financial uh financial advisor uh and say somebody else is doing the distribution form a private limited company which does the distribution and say i am a financial advisor i am not even under the purview of sebi right uh do we need such mickey mouse laws i really don't know i mean the far more important things for a regulator to do then uh, then say what nomenclature can be used and this is the only regulator who says you have to say uh, investing is subject to market risk many people who don't invest think oh there is some market risk so we should not invest uh, is there risk while investing in ppf yes there is there is it's called inflation risk it's also called a risk that the government may decide that you cannot withdraw uh, beyond 20 lakhs uh, you will be able to withdraw only as uh, 2 lakhs per year uh, 
Is the government capable of another such Mickey Mouse rules? Yes, perfectly capable. Uh, is your money very liquid in the PPF? No. I mean, it is liquid after 16 years, but after 16 years, if they say, oh, this is uh, subject to further lock-in of 5 years, you can't do anything except twiddle your thumbs. Will they do it? No. Have they done it in the past? Not with PPF, but with other things, right? So, to save from where risk will come, we do not know. But I am sure risk does not come from nomenclature. And I can tell you, I can pick you 5 or maybe even 10 uh, mutual fund advisors who are perfectly capable of sitting in a conversation with the CEOs of uh, another 5 uh, CEOs and uh, know more about uh, the mutual fund uh, industry than what the CEO would know. Not, not saying that uh, it is a great achievement or things like that, but sheer fact that they have spent 20 years or 22 years or 25 years in doing this business and suddenly now there is no nomenclature. Now this is, this is this to me is very funny because what you are depends on what your client thinks you are. You are not what uh, the designation you call yourself. I can call myself financial coach, financial doctor, financial blogger, financial writer, whatever. Ultimately, how does the how does my uh, uh, reader or my viewer uh, perceive me? So he can ask me about any question, and I can choose to answer it. And then the question is, how does he save my phone number in his uh, phone book, right? I did my articles in a place called Sharp and Tannen. Very easy to pronounce names, but during lunch time when the phone rang, uh, the phone would be picked up by one of the pions in the office uh, who would say Saptanen. Ultimately, the name was Saptanen for him, right? And that is the name which he used. I do not know whether the person making the call understood what he said, but Saptanen is what he used to say, but it was Sharp and Tannen. I don't think our partners uh, of Shabin Tannen said Saptanen, but this Pion would say Saptanen, right? So ultimately, the qu the question is, if I call myself a, uh, let's say, a, a taxation advisor who will also tell you how to plan for your children's weddings and children's education, your own retirement, etc., uh, what am I? Am I a tax advisor or does he think of me as a financial advisor? Does he think of me as a financial guru? Honestly, it doesn't matter. How I get compensated is important. How much I get as compensation is important. My client being able to understand my compensation is important. Uh, the fact that my client and client's wife and client's children uh, listen to me, think of me, uh, well, that is more important. It does not matter what is the nomenclature so well, but uh, our... Uh, you know our regulators, they are pretty obsessed with uh, nomenclature. So, I can be a certified financial consultant selling uh, life insurance, but I am not very sure whether I can be a certified financial consultant because I do not know who is to certify. But uh, the mutual fund industry says, no, you cannot call yourself any of these fancy names, you have to call yourself a distributor. The life insurance industry allows you to be called certified financial advisor, certified financial consultant and believe me, many many insurance advisors also sell uh, mutual funds. So, wake up Sebi, all these Mickey Mouse laws have to make more sense. Uh, it's easy to write articles, why it should, it should not etc. But it's not practical. Thank you.